Now I need to walk through the woods. It's totally pitch black outside and I'm in the jungle in Nicaragua. <laughs> La bonita chica así sola, no quiero que vaya. I don't want you go anywhere alone like that. Uh, you would be like <laughs> when there is uh, sugar and the, the bee is coming, you know. Okay. If you are a costume, up to you, it's your way. Huh? Entonces, sí, el moto es una buena idea. ¿Y cuánto cuesta un moto? ¿Y dónde podría alquilar uno? Sí. Yo creo 15 dólares para un día. Siempre con él que trabajamos cuando es abierto, se llama Kenneth. Hola. Yo busco Kinect. Ya. Yo busco información para alquilar un moto. Como esta. Scooter o motorcycle. Either or. This is the new model of the scooter. If you want to start it, you drive a scooter before. I have a motorcycle. Manual. Costa Rica, yeah. With gears. Yeah. First down, four gears. Yeah. Oh, you have a scooter. <laughs> but I've never driven a scooter. I'm gonna try a little bit. And remember, not clutch. Not here. That's probably easier, no? Yes. Just switched to the hostel next door, which is actually cheaper. I'm paying $5 a night for this bed. And the girls that are in here right now are from France and they're super chill and they want to climb the volcano tomorrow. That's perfect because that's pretty much the main thing that I want to do here. These are my new French friends. <laughs> they're all brother and sisters. The plan on this trip is to travel without taking a plane. Started in Vancouver, so I'm going all the way back to France in June on a sailboat. How old are you guys, by the way? Yeah, 25, 24, 19. We're gonna go riding on the scooters. They really needed somebody who had a driver's license. It worked out that I have one. And now it's raining. French friends are going to be climbing that giant volcano today. Es Guanacaste. Es el árbol nacional de Costa Rica. meters. 
smaller plants now because we're at a higher elevation. Almost there, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> ¿Cómo te llamas? Angel. Angel? Katia. Angel is from Peru and he's traveling Nicaragua right now. We are at the top of the Concepcion Volcano, the second highest volcano in Nicaragua. It's windy, really cold. I wish I had my jacket right now, but I lost it during my trip. For lunch, egg, bread, beans, and also chips. This was everything that I could find late at night at like a corner grocery store. It's actually a French knife, but it's super sharp. Tapas. Yeah, it's quite slippery. Woo! Good morning, today is a new day. The French people and the Peruvian guy that I met at the volcano yesterday are all going to the coast, a town called Popoyo. I was kind of planning on just sticking with the island and then going back to Costa Rica, but might as well just hop along. Of course, I meet Russians. Finally. Yeah, a daughter of mine is a time to And she comes to Costa Rica. She doesn't like it. She comes to Nicaragua. She doesn't like it. She doesn't want to be a girl. 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 She doesn't want to be Просто в никуда. Просто никогда не будучи, ничего не видя, ничего не зная. Просто Рика они более американ, американизированы. Немножко по-другому все дороже, немножко. Но здесь тоже все жутко, уже дорого, понимаешь? Да? Уже, да. Еда тоже? Еда дорого. Все привозят еще к тому же. А растят с химией. У меня самая такая еда это бананы. Бананы они не поливают химией. У меня бананы растут как сорняки, и поэтому... И мне все притаскивают в мой домик с ведрами, с бананами, и тут я уже их сушу, морожу. Короче, мы за 60 тысяч купили землю, это было очень недорого, потому что 4 мансаны. Ну, шикарно, с авокадо, с манго. До того, как я изменила свою жизнь, я лежала практически как две недели в кровати, на спина. И я пила так и поменяла все. Я еще в Никарагу могу говорить, что я русская, потому что они здесь дружат с Россией. В Канаде пропаганда жуткая против Никарагу. Они же санкции на них наложили. И что происходит в России сейчас? Смотрите, Украину очень сильно подготовили против России, прям причем много-много лет. Сами украинцы этого не понимали. Они считают русскими жуткими врагами, которые им считают только зла, хотя Россия столько давала Украине. Я понимала, что делают с украинцами, потому что я уже видела жизнь в Канаде. Я уже понимала, что такое задушить тебя так себе. Потому что на Украине они же живут своим собственным хозяйством. Это же все запрещено и в Америке, и в Канаде. Ты не можешь. 
можешь пойти свою свинью зарезать и продать ее. Ты должен все платить. Я поэтому угорала над украинцами. Они так хотели в эту Америку, они так хотели в эту Европу. Я думаю, боже, вы просто не представляете. Вас задушат таксами. Вы не сможете ничего для себя выращивать. Вы все, за все, надо будет платить жуткие цены. В России они все, многие, вот те, кто прорусские такие, да, они говорят, наконец-то занялись натуральным хозяйством у нас выращивать. Умирают деревни, умирают, умирают. А сейчас возвращается. Поэтому я уже решила на острове, ты знаешь, была в 2018 году война. А на острове они даже не замечали ничего. Наверху они занимаются пермакультурой. Ты можешь в зоопилоты подрабатывать. У них это принято волонтер. Вообще можно без денег жить. Да. То есть они тебя кормят едой да. веганской. Он... И ты работаешь там, не знаю, три часа в день. Nine backpackers on the back of this truck. I have the option to either go with the Russian people back to the island and see where they live, or I can go with my new friends to Pocoyo to the beach. But I don't know like what I really want. This is why it's really hard traveling alone sometimes because it's like you have no one telling you what to do or where to go. Sometimes I don't know what I want. I want to do everything. There's no wrong answer, so I guess I'm gonna flip a coin on it. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Like this. Yes. Russian people. Yeah. Let me do it one more time. Yeah. I think there was a reason why I met them. So I'm gonna do it. Ну что ты решила? Ты идешь с нами? Да. Jewish goodbye. Are you Jewish? My grandpa's Jewish. I'm back on the island. I'll be keeping my reservation at the chocolate place, which when I first went there I kind of felt like I was walking into a hippie cult, so I wasn't really sure how I was gonna feel about staying there. Nelly says something completely different about it, so maybe I need to give it like a fair chance. But we're gonna go to like some pizza party thing. A pizza please? definitely has felt like a yoga retreat. I feel like I really needed that, honestly, especially after climbing that volcano. It's been really nice, actually. I feel like really connected to the earth. Some people out here are like real spiritual, like they really get into it. Grandma Moon, I'm like, whoa, shit. I mean, it's cool though. When I first showed up here, I was like, am I walking into a cult? Like, what is this? But now like, I feel like I'm a part of it. <laughs> So now it's like not weird anymore. Maybe that makes it more weird. I don't know. I'm just taking it all in. You know, I'm taking this experience for what it is. After I met the Russians, we stopped at a thrift store. There was like a really nice thrift store that had a bunch of cute stuff. I feel like a 10 year old kid, but I like it. It's very me. Place where I did yoga this morning. Yeah, maybe we take some mushrooms and get into your kayak. Yeah, let's do it. Randomly decided to go kayaking today. <laughs> Tastes really good. There's a lot of cow pastures like everywhere. I'm in between two volcanoes. This is amazing. Where did that horse come from? Such a creature. Ducks. 
I just love them. They're like kayaks. I feel like a duck out here. They just float. He's just staring at a tree right now. The infinity tree. This is not like the most ideal place to have to go to the bathroom. So I had to ask my tree friend for a little bit of help. Perched on that tree like a bird and let it all flow out. energy in this place. This is the most epic sunset I have ever seen. every day and climb a tree every two days. I like that. I've been here for like a week, I think. And we're trapping her. And I don't know when I'm leaving exactly. I just keep extending it a little bit, which it seems like everybody that I've met so far has been doing the same thing. Everyone is slowly becoming a dirty hippie. <laughs> this is Brandon. The responsible manager. Oh, yeah. Okay. Super responsible. For sure. <laughs> yeah, especially that fire show that first day. Especially that naked fire show, yeah. This is where everyone gets all of their cute little rags. Rags. Little rags. Rags. Pets. Tell me what's good at this market. All right. Everything is good at this market. <laughs> that they're gonna put maple sauce and I will not know what inside and how much micro dosing it is. Maybe it's not micro dosing at all. I need to Hello, check thanks. out your van. I saw your van. I am now going to visit my new Russian friend Nelly. I need to find her land because she kind of lives like up in the jungle. So I rented a scooter that looks like a motorcycle. She gave me detailed instructions of how to get there, which was take a dirt road and walk all the way up and like pass a gate and then you'll see a structure and then, I don't know, I'm gonna see if I can find her before dark. Hello. 
loved having a motorcycle. So freeing. Let's go through this puddle. This little scooter is not made for these types of roads. <laughs> Hola, yo busco mi amiga Nelly. Okay, so now I guess I have to go down this dirt road for a while. It's 15 minutes. Sí. Y después dos puertas. Okay. Well, it's like a full on trail to get to Nelly's place. <laughs> Cows! Nothing like hiking up a trail to get to my friend's house. This looks like a coconut farm. And this is a banana field. I made it to the blue gate. so I don't know how to let her know that I made it to the structure. This is Yuri's Bushka. Yeah. Riding back alone in the dark is a little bit scary. It is like pitch black out here. It's, like, it's very peaceful, it's not like like sketchy dark, there's like no people outside or anything. But yeah, it's a little bit freaky. Now I need to walk through the woods to get to the hostel. I can hear the music, it's like pizza night, so they're playing a lot of music. It's weird being out here alone in the dark. It's like there's a rave in the middle of the jungle. I've not shaved my armpits this whole time. I went to some kind of dance thing, a guided improv thing. Well, it wasn't even really that guided. It was basically like a two hour dance party at nine in the morning. I'm tired. I am finally leaving Zopilote after getting stuck here for, I don't know how many days, a week? About a week, I would say. <laughs> Probably a week. Yeah. It's supposed to be one night which always turns into one week or more. Zopilote tends to have that effect on people. Night after night, after week, months, the, en months, <laughs> the energy will take you in. No one wants Three to years leave. and counting. Yeah, they live we here. We can't work. leave. For a moment I was thinking like, maybe I could just stay longer. Anyways, back to the border. Life's an adventure. <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Tim and I will be hitchhiking all the way back to Moyagolpa to the port, but we want to make sure we're spaced apart enough because it's easier to get a ride when you're um, walking by yourself, especially for a woman, because maybe I could get a ride on a motorcycle or something. Okay, after three different motorcycle rides, I finally made it to the port. Es mi nuevo amigo Rudy. He's also going to Rivas. Rivas has a bunch of really nice thrift stores.
There is a stark difference between the Costa Rican side of the border and the Nicaraguan side of the border. I'm just so freaking happy to be back in Costa Rica. Oh my god. 